how about if I told you that you can learn frequency separation in just 10 minutes? So this is a tutorial that is going to focus on frequency separation screen retouching in just 10 minutes. So just give me 10 minutes of your valuable time and you understand frequency separation. And make sure that you hit the like button because when you hit the like button, it is going to help YouTube push this video to many photographers out there interested in learning screen retouching using frequency separation. So let's just kick in with this tutorial. So usually frequency separation divides the image into two layers and we're just going to come to the background and press ctrl j twice or command j for mark we're going to name this to low frequency and we're going to name this into high frequency so in the low frequency layer we usually we have our colors or skin tone. so i'm just going to turn this high frequency layer off then come right here to filter blur and come down to gaussian blur and it is going to open up the gaussian blur window so you have to zoom in and look for an area that has more textures than the rest of the skin that you're trying to retouch and start taking up the radius up up when you start losing out on the details in the skin so i'm just going to take it up up when i've just started losing out the textures or the details in the image i'm just going to come and press ok so for the high frequency layer usually only want to remain with the textures so select it and come and activate the high frequency layer then come to image and come down to apply image so when you come to apply image if i told you have an 8-bit image make sure you select the low frequency layer and now make sure the channel is rgb right here and make sure the blend mode for an 8-bit image if i told you have 8 right here is subtract or pass and or pass at 100 percent the scale is 2 offset 128 and make sure preserve transparency and mask are not checked and make sure the invert option is not checked and you'll see textures on the gray kind of layer but if i told you have 16 like i do meaning my image is 16-bit the blend mode is going to be add or pass at 100 percent the scale is 2 offset 0 and make sure i turn on the invert option and to put the textures on this 50 percent gray kind of layer and i'm just going to come and press ok so i want to get back the image that it was meant to be initially before so come under the blend mode right here and change it from normal and change it all the way to linear light and you'll get back the image that it was meant to be so i'm going to select both layers right here and press ctrl or command g on the keyboard to group them I'm going to rename that into frequency separation right there and I'm just going to open up this group and select the low frequency layer so I want to blend the transitions within the skin so I'm just going to come under the brushes first of all I use both the lasso tool and the mixer brush tool so I first use the mixer brush tool to blend the transitions within the skin color or skin tones then later on incorporate the lasso tool technique so I'm just going to Right click under the brushes and get the mixer brush tool and for other versions of photoshop you may find your mixer brush tool right here so for your settings make sure the hardness is at zero percent and make sure it is a clean brush and make sure this option that says clean the brush after each and every stroke has been selected the weight is going to be nine percent the load of 75 the mix at 90 and the flow of 100 percent so make sure sample oils is not checked because we want to blend the skin tones in the low frequency layer and in order to see that just come and make sure that you turn off the high frequency layer and how to retouch always make sure you use these shortcuts zooming in use ctrl or command plus on the keyboard and zooming out you can use ctrl plus or command minus then also if at all you want to play around with different sizes of the brush as you're working on the images you can use the open and close brackets on the keyboard so for this case as you're retouching or blending the transitions within the skin tones make sure you don't zoom all the way in and how to do this if at all your mixer brush tool is showing this plus icon make sure you press the caps lock key on the keyboard so just going to start painting or blending the transitions within the skin color of the model and you have to play around with different sizes of the mixer brush tool depending on how small or the size of the area you're trying to blend so make sure you blend colors that are looking alike and you remain within the boundaries so you can see you blend the highlights alone, the mid-tones alone, and the shadows alone. And also, you have to move your mixer brush tool in the direction of how an area is shaped. And you really maintain the original facial shape or structure of the photos that you're retouching or of the models that you're trying to retouch. So I'm just going to come and move my mixer brush tool in this kind of up-down kind of direction. Because right on the cheekbone, it is moving in an up-down kind of a movement so i'm just going to come and blend just like that reduce on the size if at all i'm working on a small area so i'm basically mixing and blending colors that are looking alike within uh, this very image i'm just going to come 
to the chin and also reduce on the size and I work on this small area right here between the finger and the lips just going to come and do that and when it comes to the nose area I'm just going to get a smaller brush and use it or I left click and move in an up down kind of movement because I'm dealing with the nose area right in this case and just come and blend colors that are existing with that within that area so right now we are okay we are good to go and now the next part is the hands so i'm just going to use the mixer brush tool and blend the hands of the model just like i reduce on the size and also blend uh, these areas remember you have to work on every area that has skin in your photos when you're trying to retouch them using frequent separation and if at all you're finding the video helpful make it a point that you hit the like button on this video because when you hit the like button it helps youtube push and recommend this video to many people and it will be helping the channel grow in the long run so right now we are done using the mixer brush tool so let's see our results for the mixer brush tool so turn on the texture layer and you can see the before and after for just using the mixer brush tool so right now i want to use the lasso tool technique so I come and I select my lasso tool. So right click and look for my lasso tool. That is going to enable me to uh, retouch. So I'm just going to get the lasso tool and start working on this very model. So this is my lasso tool. So right click here and you get your lasso tool. So make sure it is in new selection mode and make sure the feathering is 22 pixels right here because we want smooth edges from the selections on the skin so how this works make sure you're still selected on the low frequency layer and now you can come and select the skin area and keep away from the edges or the eyebrows of the skin or the image so just come to filter blind come down to gaussian blur right here and start moving the radius up the point when you feel like you are, are having a very nice and natural texture so around 21 that is when I'm having natural skin. But as as well, you can use or you can multiply the radius that you had initially before when you're separating the frequencies of the image and just multiply it by three and type in that value. So seven by three, I'll just type in 21 and simply press OK. So I'm going to be applying this onto the overall image just like that. So draw shapes the way a given area has been or is shaped and you'll keep on retaining the original shape of the model's face. So just right click and apply your Gaussian blur. When you feel like the Gaussian blur is too much on a given area, simply right click on the selection and come to fade Gaussian blur and reduce on uh, the opacity of that effect in that area. So right click and come to Gaussian blur just like that and come to this side of the nose and also apply our Gaussian blur right there. And I'm just going to come to this other side. So usually don't apply it on the overall nose at once because it's going to flatten the nose in the long run. So we are now done retouching the image and if at all you have any blemishes you can come and remove the blemishes by selecting the high frequency layer because the blemishes are part of the high frequency layer and get the clone stamp tool the blend mode is normal and the hardness is at zero percent or percent the flat hundred percent make sure a sample is on the current layer because we only want to deal with the textures in the high frequency layer. and i'm just going to come and hold down the alternate key on the keyboard and left click to copy a clean area close to the blemish and simply release the alternate and click over the blemish to get rid of it so that is how the clone stamp tool works you can as well use the spot healing brush tool or the healing brush tool to remove the blemishes so we are now done removing the blemishes so let's do a little bit of color grading for this image so i'm just going to create a stamp visible layer of this very processes that we did down here just press shift alternate control e on the keyboard or you can use shift option command e on the keyboard for mac and just come right to filter and i'm just going to come to the camera filter right here i'm just going to do a little bit of color grading to this image so it can look a little bit more nice and appetizing so i'm just going to come to my color mixer tool and come to the luminance and simply darken the oranges for this image I'm just going to come back here and take down the highlights and take down the whites and add a little bit of contrast to the image and simply press ok and it's going to take us back to Photoshop. So in Photoshop, I will do furthermore color grading. I'm just going to come right here and create a hue and saturation adjustment layer. Come to the master and select reds and come to the lightness of the reds. I'm just going to take the lightness down and that is going to get me a 
slightly better skin tone for this model and i'm just going to do the same for yellows just going to take that down and that looks okay it looks great so next thing i'm just going to create a black and red adjustment layer i'm just going to come and change the blend mode to multiply and come the opacity and simply reduce on the opacity to have a richer skin tone complexion i'm just going to create one more selective color adjustment layer and i'm just going to come to the blacks and simply darken the black slightly up to around one and simply add a little bit of bluish tone to cool down the image and after doing that i'm just going to come and create one more hue and saturation adjustment layer and let's do a little bit of eye whitening so come to the master and make sure you desaturate up to around negative 85 and make sure the layer mask is selected and press ctrl command i on the keyboard and come back and get the brush tool right click and get the normal brush tool and make sure the hardness is at zero percent or percent the flat of 100 percent and make sure you have white as a foreground color right here and you can reset by clicking on these two small boxes right here and you can switch between black and red by using x on the keyboard or you can use this arrow right here so right now let's just zoom into the eyes right now and you are going to whiten the eyes by simply painting using our white brush and revealing or whitening the eyes in the process so let's just do this so we are now done doing the skin retouching and color grading plus also eye whitening let me hope we are still in the 10 minutes margin so right now let's say quick before and after so this is the image before after before after so let's save the image so it doesn't change in color after saving it so just come right to file and come to export and come down to export as when you come to export as you are going to get another window that is going to open up that is the export as window and with this we're just going to simply feed in this setting so make sure the format is jpeg and make sure the quality is 100 percent so we want the photo to be sharpened for us by photoshop as we are saving it so make sure the resample is by cubic sharper and make sure you come to the color space and make sure you check convert to srgb and also embed color profile so when you embed color profile and also convert to srgb it is going to embed those colors that you are able to color grade into your photo and when the preview is done loading or when the preview is done loading right here just come and simply press export and you can look for an area that you want to save your image in the long run so just come and press save so basically this is it for this tutorial and i hope you have learned everything about frequency separation from the very start to the very end color grading and eye whitening so this is it for this story and if at all you learned something make sure to hit the like button on this video so that youtube can push and recommend these videos to many people out there ronix from ronix photography thank you for watching i'll see you in yet more amazing tutorials and don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating